what's good y'all want to my review for this week's episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind Bro, yo, yo It's episode 5 And man Bucerati Bucerati man Ooh I think next week we may witness this man's Final demise Yeah man Episode crazy. we saw a little bit more Pone Lorep Did they change his dub voice at all? Cause his voice Sounded different a bit. I don't know if it's just me or if they changed his uh, his VA at all. I don't know. He's, he just kind of sounded a bit different in this episode. But yeah, man. Let's just jump right in. Also, before we jump right in, uh, we actually got announced a couple days ago, actually. Yeah, a couple days ago. That Shenmue is actually that uh, Toonami is, is teaming with Crunchyroll again to make a Shenmue anime series. Which I am very curious to see how that's going to turn out. Me personally, I'm not really much of a Shenmue fan at all, but I am definitely curious to see how that's how that's going to happen, how that's going to work. I don't know how far it's gonna go. Is it gonna go through the first two games? Is it gonna go through all three games? Is it just gonna go through the first game? We will have to wait and see. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's just jump right in. So you start the episode off after we get through all the recap and shit from what happened last week. Boots it off to Seko, where he descends to the ground, and Seko's like, "Why isn't there any mold on you?" Etc. 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 We're back to where we were lab. We're, we're back to where we got boots around. He's leaning against like he's holding onto like this pole with like his feet slowly starting to sink down. And the second was sent from the ground. He notices that people that the, the the mold is completely gone. No one has the mold anymore. He's looking around and no one and he can't see no one. And so he's one. And so he's looking around, being like, "What? What the hell is going on? Where did all the mold go?" Ah! And, and he's like, he's getting kind of pissed off, what's going on here? Buturati notices this and he's thinking that Buturati, that uh, Giorno and the others finally took care of that other guy. Finally took care of uh, Chocolata. So then Chocolata checks, or not Chocolata, Seko checks his phone, he has like a voicemail from Chocolata. He listens to it and he's like, Seko. And he tells him that, you know, I took a, that I took a mean head wound. And it doesn't look like he's probably going to make it. So he makes a precaution and tells uh, Seko that to go to, that, that, that they're after the call Steve. They're going there to find, to find someone that will defeat the boss, etc, etc, etc. So, so once Seko realizes this, he kind of just, he kind of like turn he turns this, he like, yo, the, the message ends. And he, and, and then Seko's like, gah! And then, you know, at first he's like, well, at first he's kind of, he doesn't just kind of stand there and be like the call Steve, but then he just like completely turns on, um, oh, so you guys hear the back of the fans running. That he actually like completely turns on uh, on Chocolata. First he like throws the phone at the and he throws his phone at like a wall and it completely shatters, being like, "Oh, uh, being like you lost to a bunch of clowns. I thought you were strong. That's why I listened to you for so long. This that, and the third. He spits on the camera, then it like just disintegrates, and then he just says, "Well, you can in like hell, so I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to be with you anymore. So you can kiss my ass." <laughs> And makes a beeline towards the Colosseum. So then Butarati comes in there. He actually does this one thing where, like, he like he's like Zipperman, and like hits like I think it was like like a pole or something. And it has like this two zipper thing, like this, and he fires like the zipper right between where a uh, Seko thinks he missed, but he actually starts to close it. And it was almost going to decapitate Seko if he didn't dodge it. And he like used his power to like maneuver the pole or whatever he used as one of the parts um, to lock in the uh, zipper that he, he would he would not have a head cut. but then he turns it over to where Butarati is and he just barely manages to dodge it he ends up getting his throat slit a little bit only a little bit of blood comes out not much it wasn't pouring blood or nothing so from there they got so and so uh, and so from there he just kind of stand there trying to figure out what to do next he thought that Seko was uh, or Chocolata was going to be his big star but nah Seko is going to be his but now he's going to be his Seko ain't no slouch either so it's, uh, so jo so the Butarati jumps on top of this pole and goes for a kick, but misses. And then and then uh, Seko goes for like that thing where like he bounces his arm off the surface or whatever to give his punches more power. He does that, but Butarati then cuts like kind of like breaks off the pole with the zipper and it goes and it looks like it's gonna go right for his neck if it actually pierced him. Then Zero Man comes in to throw some punches, but Seko dodges him, or Seko blocks him. The next thing we know, he's then thrown into like this window in the store. And he's doing like, oh, that big brain of yours saved me. Yeah, but I'll give you that. But don't get cocky. You know, he's not going on like giving him the proper tell not to get cocky at the same time. And next thing and then next thing that happens is Guterati 
Uh, well, first off, we actually see some stuff in the binoculars. They like see some light kind of reflecting off from the binoculars over in the Coliseum. This light in the Coliseum. They're kind of like staring at for a minute, and Seppo's asking, like, did you see that? What's going on there? And, you know, all that. And so then he's, uh, so they're just kind of standing from what they but then he realized, yeah, that's binoculars. And of this is Polar. We see him kind of looking in there, they're kind of like hide behind, like, the pillar or whatever. Hide back into the shadows. And. And so then he's like, I know I saw something, he was a guy in binoculars, one of the guys was a prosthetic. I don't know how he was able to see that far, because the Coliseum looked pretty far, but hey, maybe this man has enhanced eyesight, because you know he has enhanced earring or whatever. Um, but anyway, so he sees that, he notices that. And, uh, yeah, so he sees that, like, the guy just said it, but Butarati then actually has, like, holds up, like, this glass from the window that he just smashed through. And I would also second ask him, like, you know, what's up with your body? Because, you know, he was also got some, because Butcherado had some glass inside him, but no blood was coming out. Which we kind of find out what's going on with Butcher later on in the episode, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, he's holding up his glass, and then Seko goes for a punch. And then punch, try, goes for, and tries to punch it. But while he, but then, we then see, like, then Butcher pulls, like, this magic where we see him just fall into the ground, and he just kind of disappears. So he looks around, and we find that there's a small zipper right underneath the floor where Butcherati obviously went down it. And so, and then Seko's like, Oh, you think you can hide from me? Ta! How dare you steal my tricks! Eat shit! Got so there, whatever the fuck he said. He goes to punch the whole, he goes to punch the word Zimmerus, but then it vanishes. So then that's when he realizes, oh, he's not hot. He's running away. He's like going, he's like going through like, he's probably doing what Seko can do, but he's doing it with just the zipper. So he's rushing in there, so he's like, so he's still, we see Butaraji just like sprinting towards, the, pr sprinting towards nothing really, he's just like opening zippers, moving and tossing and forth. So then Seko kind of goes on about how dare you steal my tricks, this, that, and the third, and then just dives right in, and dives right into the floor, and starts swimming towards Butaraji, which actually, I gotta I lie, this thing, seeing this actually was pretty cool, seeing like, Seko like swimming in there, just chasing him out, chasing him out, I thought that was pretty cool. But he, so he's like swimming through this shit to get to him, and he's like, ah, you're only a measly 20 meters, 10, 20 meters to the left, oh, now you're going right, 10 meters, 7 meters, and we hear the, and we start hearing the sound like a metal clanking, and then he finally reaches where it you know, sounded, and we find out that's actually just a pipe, these like two like water pipes like hitting against each other constantly, and so he like punches it to stop it from doing so, and he thinks like, Oh, you think you're clever, huh? Tch, no matter. I'm not done. I'll get you. I'll get you. Whatever. He's like, he's like not, nah, you know, he just, and then he goes right back into uh, swimming. Back there, trying to change the rapid. So then he's like kind of like, Butcherai's still kind of looking around, but then he started noticing he hears something different. Now, so let's go back over with Seko. So Seko kind of comes, returns up to the surface, so to speak. And then next thing he knows, his like tongue gets super long, and he starts like licking like the stone or dirt or whatever he was eating like from the floor. He's like, rah, 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 rah. you guys saw me when I posted a, bit, a tweet, a clip of it, and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, WTF? So after he eats it, he then spits it out, and then it kind of comes, and then it comes, and then it comes down to where, about the area where Butarati is in. And starts and they, and he mentions that once they leave is like that's like super soft and rubbery once it's near him, but once it's away far enough like Seko, it returns back to stone. So of course these are pretty working as like makeshift spears. And they're like all piercing through uh Bucciarati and Seko so like, the only way for you to survive is you just stay as completely still as possible. And then he also goes on about this dude that he barely was like got hanged three times but survived because the rope broke because the rope broke every single time. And he's like, isn't that crazy? And I'm, just, and I'm just like, what? And I'm like, kind of wondering, is the boots gonna get out of this? Is he gonna just get die here? What's going to happen next? So then, actually, we head over back to Paul and the Red, and I, and, and now this actually kind of uh, confused me for a minute because, and I print, and I tweeted this out as well, that his voice sounded a bit different than when we last saw him at the end of part three. I was under the impression that they just changed, that they might have changed his voice actor, and. And so then I rushed so then this morning before I started recording the review, I went and watched Chibi Reviews' review of the episode, because I wanted to see if maybe they did with the sub as well. And Chibi also mentioned that his voice sounded different than what it did in part three. 
And what ended up happening is just the, that it was the same VA, they just aged him up. He just a added a lot of age to his voice because Butra, uh, Polnareff, not Butrati, Polnareff is around 36 years old, I believe, uh, right now in part five. So, and I'm assuming that's what the dub VA did, same thing as well for Polnareff and what he did. So, that was actually pretty cool that he was able to age him up because I honestly thought they changed his voice. It sounds really cool, and I, I just thought they, they changed his voice, but they, no, they did not. So anyway, he's going on, he's like, he has, like, so we've seen the man is like, pretty much to take, to take, to quote Shibi, he is now in a permanent silver chariot. He's like wheelchair mouth with two prosthetic legs, and he has his laptop right on top of him. And, you know, on this laptop, it shows all of the members of Butrai's crew, you know, Butrati, Giorno, Mista, and Lancia. He has a laptop with all of them. He's going on about how he got this new stand arrow that was about, like, I think, 12 years ago, after what happened with after what happened with Dio in the Battle of Egypt, and that that one of these guys he, that if he cannot find them, he will then he will just destroy the arrow. But he said that you know one of them, but he hopes that one of them get there because they need to learn the secrets, the secrets of it to win, to be to be Emperor Crimson. And the fates did not decide for him to um, to, to to bestow this power to defeat the defeat Emperor Crimson. is going to be one of these guys, and so from there, which. I'm actually, one thing I'm really curious about with uh, Paul and the Red is that he has two prosthetic legs. And that I found very interesting because last time, because last time we saw him, Paul and the Red, he had both his legs. So I'm curious on what happened. I tweeted out the why, why is he in a wheelchair. Someone told me that, don't you remember him getting beat up, getting like beat up or whatever? I forgot exactly what he said. And I said, yeah, but I don't remember him losing his legs. So I'm curious if maybe something, that maybe something happened with Emperor Crimson. Maybe he faced off against the boss beforehand, and that's how he lost his legs. I don't know. We'll probably find out in the next couple couple episodes when Polnareff starts to take a much bigger role. Which I gotta say, I love the fact of these. Of uh, I love how Araki has used these older characters from previous parts, these legacy characters, I guess you can call them, and how well he's effectively used them because he's used them in a way to like uh, not to where they take over the story, but they kind of there to help out the main cast and kind of and get. And give a little bit more extra familiarity and kind of add to it. Like we saw that with uh, with Jotaro and Joseph in Part Four, most specifically, and of course Joseph in Part Three as well. We saw that where the where they were helping the stars. Like they weren't the stars of the show, but they added a lot. They were there with the crew, and it just kind of added to the overall greatness of those parts, especially Part Four, because Jotaro in there was absolutely fantastic. You guys know how much I love Jotaro. And then and then and then we saw Koichi in Part Five. That was pretty cool too, because you guys know how much I love Koichi. And I'm assuming they will probably see the same thing here with our boy, Pondola. So, I'm definitely excited to see what, we, what comes next with our, with our, with our good old the Frenchman. So anyway, he goes on and says that it's ironic that people that were like cast out from society that found, that found purpose and a family, and family inside the Mafia are now trying to save the people that shunned them. Because I thought that was pretty funny from Pondola. And... He kind of goes on that he hopes that that he hopes that Butcherati and his guys want to come over here and 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 you know get the album here, but he all he can do is hope for now, and and that you know all he can do is hope and that. But until then, he'll preserve the true power of this arrow. So he's yeah. Anyway, and it's so weird seeing Polar with like with like prosthetic legs and like I really hope we get some sort of explanation on what the hell that's about. I, I assume he might have had some run-in with the boss, because I don't remember Dio ripping his legs off. I, so I assume he must have had some run-in with the boss or something. But yeah. I wonder if we'll find out what happened to his sister, because I think she was still alive, right? Or did she die at the hands of Dio? I forget, which, I, I forget what happened with the sister. Anyway. But yeah, if you guys remember what happened with the sister, correct me in the comments, because I forgot. Was she still alive in the part three, or was that the reason why Polarev went to go after Dio was because he killed his sister? Don't really remember mine. But anyway. So we get back to we get that back to Butarati. The man is still holding his brother, like, mm, trying not to move, but he just says "fuck it," and he uses Zipman to like block some attacks, and he's back on the run. And then Seko, who I got I gotta give major props to Seko's dub VA. I'm sure his sub VA here in this episode was also fantastic, but he was really good. But he was probably the highlight of the episode. Outside of obviously the return of Paul the ref, he was probably the highlight of this episode in terms of the of uh, the voice acting in this episode. He was probably the highlight, because he was actually fantastic. He was knocking out the part all of the entire episode. So anyway. So then so then he keeps moving, and then Seko dives back in there. And the one thing that's actually kind of cool is that we actually kind of got like this double 
abuse thing where we see obviously what's going beneath the ground with with uh, Seko right on the tails of Bucciarati, but we also see a bit of the of the actual like surface as well from like the floor and everything. And it looked in the angle itself looks really really cool. I'm not gonna lie, it looks really really nice. But anyway, excuse me, Bucciarati. So anyway. Uh, but like Swim is trying to like run past him and you know, uh, Seko is like trying to catch up and he actually said like, You can't be seeking cover in the Coliseum! That's the dumbest idea you've had all day! That's like a hell I would let you! And he's swimming after him and like, this pose is like swimming in like the, like, I don't know, water movements here. That's like, it looks pretty cool and kind of ridiculous. <laughs> in a JoJo kind of way, man. You gotta love JoJo and it's just over the top ridiculous. Like, it's, all, it's so, it's so good. But anyway, he starts chasing after Bucciarati. He then, like, pretty much gets right up to Bucciarati. He's like, I got you! And, like, fires off all these attacks that send him flip, that send him right back up into the air to surface. And then he comes right back down. And he says, Oh, you were so close to the Coliseum. But, uh, but now it's time to die! Or something along those lines. But then, right when he goes in for the kill, the colors switch and you hear Jorna sing. Bum, 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 dun, 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 dun. And he's like, somebody call it a miracle. I have a heat. And then he goes on, and what he ends up doing, he calls Zipper Man. There it comes, like, Zipper Man, like, punches the tire on one of these, on, on the car right behind him, and then it explodes. Which, and he goes on, and he, oh, oh, first off, I gotta mention, the dude's skin started melting right before, um, took a lot of cosmos. Which, I'm curious to see where it looks like, like, legit, the dude's still trying to turn into, like, a fucking zombie or something right now. So, I'm here, and that's gonna come into play for what happened to the episode. I wanted to bring that up because I didn't, because I forgot to mention that. But anyway, he goes in there, he's like, uh, Zipper Man is like slowly trying to pop the tire, and he goes on about like, he's hoping that his eardrums are as resilient as he is. And he also says that, that he can't feel pain no more, his heart doesn't beat at all, so that's why he doesn't bleed as much. And that kind of, ex and this kind of explains what's going on with him, I guess. I'm still kind of confused on how he's alive. Per se, but I'm guessing this kind of makes a little bit more sense. But who knows? Maybe we'll find out what happens next week or something. Anyway, um, yeah. So he pops. So the tire pops. It's like huge, like smoke starts coming out of chocolate uh, out of Seko's ears and nose. He's like ah, ah, and he, and then and then Butcherati is on his leaf. And says so like you, you son of a bitch! You think my hearing is destroyed? I can still track you. That pop, that tire popping was there, which means you're over here. And he goes for a kick, and then his leg, <laughs> his leg gets run over. He's like, ah, my leg! What happened to my leg? And then from there, he's like, I don't remember that game. Do any of y'all know that game? I think it might have been a mobile game or something where you're on the road and you're trying not to get hit by cars. I know it's probably pretty vague, but I swear to God, I played a game or saw a game just like that. Or Am I thinking of a Frogger? Is that the game I'm thinking about? I don't know. But he's like trying to like not get run over, dodging all these cars. He gets onto the sidewalk. He's like spooked by like this poster of a woman. Then he's spooked by a dog. He's like, ah, what's going on here? Ah! And then Butchanati comes out and out comes out of the floor. He's like, so what did you call your ground, your ground maneuver, your ground altering standing in sanctuary? Was it? And he kind of goes on about how with that that instead he uses his hearing as a sonar, but because of that, but because he doesn't have it anymore, because his eardrums have been ruptured, he's pretty much fucked. And he's like, "Oh, you you son of a bitch! You think I can't track you without my eardrums? Ah, you fool! My status, my stand is amazing, and all this other shit." He's trying to, he's always trying to bullshit his way out of this. And he's like, and, he, and, and Bootsroth, he's like, slowly walking towards me as like, as a Seko is like, it's up in a corner, uh, uh, behind like a map or something. And he's like, stay back, I'm ordering you, Katsune! And the next thing he knows, he actually grabs Dopio, yes, Dopio made his, made his return. And he grabs him and he starts like, using him as a hostage, telling him to keep away, but Bootsroth just keeps marching forward towards him. He tells him he's gonna like, kill him, you know, dissect him, chop him up, take chunks and all this other shit. And he gets over there, and then he punches right. He takes a cue out of actually Joe's game playbook, where he just punches right through him with his stand, and then kind of leaves him. And he's and the, and Seko's like, what was that? It's supposed to be a tickle. What was that? Supposed to be? And the next thing you know, there's like this thing. There's a zipper on him, and like on his shoulder area. There's like this. 
I don't even know what it was. There was something on there. He's like, ah, get it off, get it off. And next thing he knows, he actually falls into the same track trash can that Chocolata was in, and then and it rides off. So that was, that was pretty funny. But then we head over back to Dodopio. He comment. He's mentioned that he plans to track down uh, Seco and Chocolata through his cell phone, through his like cell phone calls or whatever. And the next thing we know, Butchroy is down on the ground. He's, he's melting even more. He mentions how his vision is getting blurry. He's like, "Is this the end? I know this day would come, but damn it!" And you know. And then next thing we know, we see Dopio raising his hand away like he's about to kill him. And then we get the to be continued. Motherfuckers, how dare you leave me on a cliffhanger like that? Come on, man. But anyway, but yeah, man. And that is the end of the episode. Overall, fantastic episode, man. I absolutely loved it. I'm really curious what's going to happen next with Butrati. Is he going to die? Is he not? Is he going to survive? We'll find out next time. What happens up with Polnareff? What's when are we going to see more of him? I bet the next episode definitely has my interest, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, hope overall I'm going to give this episode a 10 out of 10. This episode's fucking fantastic, man. So hope you all enjoyed the video. If you like, you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you like, at least on the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time. She's too bad, 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 she's too b